After 12 painful years of nothing but pure agony, I have finally graduated from school. Which means that I get to do basically whatever the hell I want now. And what better use of my newfound freedom than to waste it watching bad movies. I make good life decisions. A while ago, before I got sucked into the never-ending rabbit hole that is the Asylum's catalogue of movies, I was looking through a list of rip-off blockbusters and came across one that piqued my interest. A movie called Metal Man. Not to be confused with the Mega Man character. <laughs> Surprisingly, no, the Asylum did not make this one. See, I told you I'm not addicted, I can stop anytime I want. The blatant, unashamed bootlegginess of this made me so eager to try and find it to see if it was as good as the poster made it seem. And oh boy, was that one hell of a journey. In order to track this movie down, I had to embark on an epic quest to scour the internet, because I could not find it anywhere. It's as if for some strange reason, every website had been wiped clean of this movie's existence. Amazon listed it, but didn't have it available, and when it did, it didn't ship to Australia. And every site I tried just did not have have it or thought I just misspelled Iron Man. Except for one. And thanks to them, that brings us to now. This video was brought to you by FreeOnlineHDMovies.com <laughs> Let's just hope that it was worth all the effort to find. Oh, who am I kidding? Staring at a wall for 10 hours would have been a better use of my time. I also found out during this time that sometimes it's also called Iron Hero. Just in case it wasn't clear enough what movie they're trying to rip off here. Now, of course, this was released in 2008 to coincide with the birth of the MCU. Which honestly makes me a little bit sad that there isn't a whole cinematic universe of these rip-off superhero movies. This copy of the movie is in 480p though, so I sincerely apologize that it looks like it was filmed with a shitty Nokia phone, which, let's be honest, it probably was. I hope you're more prepared than I am to watch Metal Man. Our protagonist is Kyle. Just Kyle, who I think is meant to be in college, but looks like a 30 year old who still lives with his parents. We get a great first impression of him as he grabs a milk carton from the fridge and takes a massive swig of it like a goddamn psychopath. Don't do that. Oh, go ahead. I can't put it back in the fridge now. What an excellent way to start your movie. We get a bunch of exposition for the romantic subplot in like five seconds, where the parents bully Kyle about this girl he likes. Are you two dating again? No, Mom. I, you know, I don't actually- Mom, oh, shut up! Her. You're embarrassing me! He then makes a break for school, claiming he's super late, despite taking as long as humanly possible to get ready and leave the house. And there's our love interest. All three pixels of her. Can't wait for this conversation, considering how awkward Kyle is with his own parents. You know, he's eccentric, but not mad. No, no, so... What does he have you working on, then? Um, no, I really can't, I can't say, so... Sworn to see Christina. Did you run late? <laughs> yeah? And he's still running late. Jesus, come on, man, get it together! Let's see, all right. <laughs> Oh my god, what the hell is that? So this is Kyle's professor, and he's using Kyle as a test subject for a secret experiment he's been working on. And oh no, there it is. Oh dear god. So yeah, instead of being something that he built in a cave with a box of scraps, the iron... hero suit is an elaborate science project that they then run some tests on, which involves trying to freeze him to death. Apparently. But then, a bunch of evil-looking business dudes show up, and this guy claims that he made the helmet. See, if you did take time to know me better, you have chosen wiser than to steal my helmet from me. <gasps> but who can we trust? <laughs> After an epic battle, the evil dude escapes with the helmet, but not before swearing to find Kyle, who they need for some reason. The professor then remembers he locked the poor guy in the freezer, and so after 12 years, finally decides to let his probably frozen corpse out. But I guess the scuffle was just too much for the professor, because he then has his dramatic death scene and dies, which Kyle is very choked up about. <laughs> but then... This is an AI representation of myself. Oh god, now he's in the helmet! You have become the most advanced human species on this planet. The AI doctor breaks the sad news to Kyle that the suit does in fact not come off. So I'm stuck in this damn thing forever? I'm afraid so. Man, that'd be kinda cool if it didn't look like such a piece of crap. I'm sorry I didn't have time to prepare you. You're sorry? I'm stuck in this damn helmet with your dead body on the floor and you're sorry? Yes, you won't do the suit, can you make sure the voice is as muffled as possible? <laughs> I love the contrast here between the uncomfortably calm professor Kyle, you can't leave as you are and Kyle, who is having a mental breakdown Oh my god, I'm gonna die, holy shit, what the- Kyle, what calm god, down, please. Everything is going- Oh, ah, holy fuck! It's then revealed that all he has to do to make the suit disappear is say the word stealth. Oh my god. Well, that's- uh -huh. But it's implied that he's still wearing the suit underneath, it's just not visible. Man, that must make intimacy difficult, not that that'll be a problem for our man Kyle. Oh god. 
Oh my god, they actually murdered his parents. <laughs> I'm getting mad Power Rangers vibes right now. Aside from the, you know, dead parents. Oh boy, here we go. Time to get a taste of Metal Man. Kyle, stop. You'll kill him. That's the plan. Who is a murderous psychopath. I knew the milk was a sign. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Get him, Kyle. Unless the suit, like, magically taught him how to fight, I'm not quite sure how all of a sudden, even with the armor, he's suddenly curb-stomping these guys. I mean, maybe Kyle was previously a black belt. We don't know. But not that I'm complaining. This is amazing. Credit where credit is due. This fight scene is super entertaining. Like, did you see that? You just took out three guys with one kick. Can Iron Man do that? Didn't think so. Dr. Arthur Blake, a research scientist at the university, was found murdered. At the university. The one university. Because this movie was actually entertaining for a couple minutes, we then cut to a scene when we get to listen to the evil guys discuss being evil. He had on a helmet like the one that you took from the lab. Please tell me how's a pit bull a shoot up your hand. Uh, Mike guy, did you forget to press the on button? You guys know that you can re-record audio, right? Just like, ADR it. No? Any idea how to activate them? So the main villain and one of his employees he wants to sleep with talk about Kyle. I also have his IQ test results. He scored a 173. He's a genius. Oh yeah, that's not even impressive. My IQ is shit. You two interrupted my meal. This had better be good. One take. This entire movie was done in one take. Now that he has the suit, Kyle can't eat regular food anymore. He instead has to ingest green goop at the back of his head or something because nanobots, I think? <laughs> what is this music? I knew that you could be trusted with this enormous responsibility. I'll try and do the right thing, but I can't make any promises. Kyle, stop being such a goddamn pussy. The professor tells Kyle he can create a holographic disguise of himself because what can't the helmet do at this point? And he gets turned into... This guy. In the meantime, while we follow Kyle's escapades, the movie makes sure to cut back to the bad guys to show us what exciting things they're up to. Kyle lasts about five seconds in his new disguise without attracting attention, before accidentally bumping into some random guy. Completely unnecessarily. What the hell are you staring at, boy? Hey man, sorry I bumped into you. I really didn't mean to. I think you did! Hey, why the hell are you staring at my girl, man? Hey, huh? I don't want any trouble, man. I don't want you any want trouble. trouble. Oh, I think you do. This guy woke up just really wanting to fight someone. Like, he was gonna take any excuse he could get to start a fight. <laughs> well, that just... happened. There's a subplot going on in the background about the girl working for the villain wanting to help Kyle or some shit, but then it backfires because he's evil and stuff. Where are you? No! No! no. I was a Oh god, my ears! Ah! They put the decoy helmet on the other girl scientist and it kills her or something? What? Hear me. You're evil! Are you done? So the guy from before who Kyle very mildly inconvenienced follows him all the way on foot just to try and fight him again. And wow, this guy is swole as hell. He's been waiting for this moment. And then he prepares to drive away in a car while still wearing the suit <laughs> until two more bad guys show up I don't know how they can look at that mask without laughing. It looks like he's perpetually severely constipated What what are you saying? I, I literally can't understand <laughs> Mercifully though Kyle will leave the guy alive though probably only after crushing his windpipe and leaving him to suffer eternally Don't forget that this is the same guy that drinks milk straight out of the carton inside the house He's ambushed by more assailants. I really don't know I don't know why these guys keep trying. I mean, he's literally wearing an indestructible suit. Like, what are they gonna do? You're coming with us. Get him, boys! There's... There's only one other guy. Unsurprisingly, after another epic fight scene, Kyle manages to defeat them all after fracturing every bone in their body. <laughs> and then he just leaves. And then just randomly and completely unrelated to the plot, Kyle intervenes with two dudes harassing a woman and decides to beat down on them. Oh no, he's got a taste for blood now. Run, you fools! Five times. That shot was so cool that they had to play it five times. Oh, and he just has healing powers now. 
All right. Yeah, the built-in cure cancer function sure was a breakthrough in science. Then, with surprising ease, Kyle breaks into the evil guy's lair to take him on. And so he does. <laughs> But much to Kyle's disappointment, he doesn't get to kill him because he has a hostage, which turns out to be the girl Kyle was talking to from the beginning of the movie. After freeing her, she just goes along with the creepy guy in the suit who sounds like the living embodiment of dial-up internet. Why you bring me his blood sample? <laughs> wow, that was great, guys. And now the suit has invisibility powers. If you touch her... She will become invisible as well. What's going on, Kyle? What are you doing? You you can't just keep making this up as you go along. Come on, Metal Man. I'm able to make us both disappear. Now we should be able to walk right out of here. Our guy, Kyle. Guile <laughs> manages to make it out of there unharmed, but the girl passes out or dies or something, and we're subjected to this movie's attempt at an emotional moment. Oh no, okay, she's fine. <laughs> the bad dude puts the other helmet on the doctor girl, but she doesn't die like her friend did, just because. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Kyle suddenly wakes up and it looks like everything was just a bad dream. And the girl is there too. And then they make out for an uncomfortably long amount of time. Hold on, actually, I probably shouldn't be showing you this considering the last time I showed a, uh, a sex scene, aka two actors awkwardly pretending to dry hump one another, it got my video age restricted. Sorry, I'm afraid you have to miss out on this incredibly steamy scene. Kyle, you know how I like to watch. What? What? No. No. No, no, no. Aw oh, man, the dream was just a dream. Then it's time for the epic climactic final epic anime showdown battle, where the scientist girl has somehow, without explanation, been converted into a green metal man. Yes! Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is somehow the most boring fight in the whole thing. God damn it, movie, you were doing so well. And that was over in literally less than two minutes. Why why did it take him longer to beat up a group of thugs? Oh whatever, the movie's done anyway, who cares? Now freaking everyone is wearing the helmet. I- I have no idea what is going on anymore. Then the villain dies, and I think it's all over? I made sure I was one step ahead of you. <laughs> what? Of course, it wouldn't be a Marvel movie ripoff without a post credit scene just as nonsensical and pointless as the rest of the movie. We cut to one year later, where both Kyle and the girl scientist still have the masks melted to their heads. They then press their masks together, fade to black, movie that over. That... that was amazing. Congratulations, um... Ron Karkoska, you made a better ripoff movie than The Asylum, which is like the lowest standard of all time. Ah! Overall, there are elements of so bad it's good in Metal Man, but so much of it is padded by these boring ass villain scenes. For every genuinely entertaining or unintentionally hilarious moment, you also get this. the most bearable of the ripoff movies I forced myself to watch, at least when compared to this absolute garbage, but I think that's because the audio and visual errors left in the movie make it far more enjoyable than it should be. If after watching me suffer through this entire thing, you're for some reason thinking, wow, I really want to do that too, don't, because there's no legal way to. The only way is to head to the dark and mysterious corners of the internet, the Google homepage, and type in the illegal and forsaken keywords. Metal Man, free online, one, two, three, four movies. Seriously though, it's not worth it. Well, glad I watched that. That was an excellent use of an hour and a half. I wonder if Kai was still out there with the helmet still stuck to his head and still having a taste for vengeance. Metal Man could beat Thanos. Thanks for watching.